My boyfriend kicked me out of my apartment at 3 in the morning. Is this normal? Disclaimer is not my story time. My boyfriend is extremely insecure. Let me start off by saying I have never cheated on him. But he accuses me of it every single day. If I go to the gym, if I go to the supermarket, it doesn't matter where I go, he's always thinking that I'm trying to look for guys. A couple of days, he accused me of it again. I showed him proof that I was at my mother's house. He got so angry that he started yelling at me. And he yelled for two hours. I'm not exaggerating. My neighbor knocked on her door and asked if I was okay. That's when my boyfriend pushed me out the door and locked me out. It was three in the morning. My neighbor, who's my age, asked me to come over to my place and I said no. I needed to get back into my apartment, the apartment that I pay rent for. I knocked on the door for an hour and he still wouldn't open. By the way, I was just wearing a t-shirt. I had no shoes on, no phone. I finally knock on my neighbor's door and she lets me sleep in her place. An hour later, my boyfriend comes knocking on the door insisting that I come home. When I went back into my apartment, there was broken glass everywhere. Then he started apologizing for breaking my dishes, not for the fact that he kicked me out of my apartment at 3 in the morning. You won't believe it, but things got even worse. I go to my bedroom and what do I see? Go to part 2. My boyfriend kicked me out of my apartment at 3 in the morning. Is that normal? Claire, this is not my story time. He finally lets me back into my apartment. I see a bunch of broken dishes on the floor. He casually apologizes and tells me to go to bed. When I walk into my bedroom, my clothes were everywhere. Mind you, I have very expensive clothes. I have a lot of designer, Fendi, Gucci. And as I got closer to some of my dresses, I could see that he had taken scissors and cut them up. I couldn't believe it. He then flat out denied that he did that. He said that there must have been a demon in my apartment. I asked him to leave and he wouldn't. I just cried myself to sleep. The next morning, I woke up to a weird sound. Luckily, he had already left. He wrote me an apology letter and showed up to my apartment with breakfast 20 minutes later. That's when he said that he had never acted that way before and that he was sorry. But I was traumatized. I let him in with the breakfast I kept hearing something in my closet. He told me to just ignore it. It was like a really weird noise, but it would stop and then start again. He told me that it must have been something in the walls. Then he told me that he believed me that I wasn't cheating on him. I even told him that he should just turn on my location so he could see where I am at all times. I know this isn't normal, but guys do get jealous, right? I ended up working things out and he went to work. And he promised he wouldn't do it again. That little noise started up again in my closet. But when I opened my closet, I saw a robotic teddy bear. It had two bulging eyes and I had never seen it before. It was just moving around my closet making noise. When I picked it up, up, it was all wet. I called my boyfriend and asked him if he put it there. That's when he said, no, I told you there's a demon in your apartment. He texted me later saying it was actually a gift for me. I don't know what to make of it. It's a weird looking bear. It turns on randomly and starts saying things like, I love you. My boyfriend is on his best behavior though. He hasn't accused me of anything and we haven't fought in over a week. In fact, he's been bringing me lunch and bought me all the dishes that he broke. He even took me to Gucci to replace the dress he cut up. I haven't told my friends or family because I'm kind of embarrassed. Do you guys think this is normal? Get ready with me while I explain the time that I almost got kidnapped when I was little by a Pizza Hut worker. So I'm just going to be completely real with you guys. Um, like, I'm not going to filter anything. This is actually really weird. For background information, I was with my dad for the weekend because I did not have parents that were together. And I was out at around 2 a.m. with my friend Caitlin, who was around the same age as me. And I was around, like, I don't remember if I already said this. Like, I was like 8 to 10 years old. And we were, we lived in an apartment complex, right? Basically, we were walking around the apartment complex. And it's like a pretty big apartment complex with lots of different like apartments everywhere. And we went to the lake, right? Um, this is about like one in the morning, probably. We were just kind of just like sneaking around, you know, doing whatever. Because our parents didn't really care about us technically. But um, we were walking around and we're getting chased by geese, by the way, because... Um, I don't remember exactly what we did to make them chase us, but we were getting chased by a bunch of geese for a while. Like, they didn't stop chasing us for a while. And we're like little kids just running back from these geese. But, um, all of a sudden we get back to my apartment complex and it's pretty dark outside. The only lights that are there are, like, the street lights. And all of a sudden we're, like, about to walk in our room and we're sitting at the stairs of the apartment complex. And this Pizza Hut worker starts driving by and he's driving real slow. And he keeps going. We're like, okay, weird. And we're like, okay, that's just a pizza pizza guy he's finding his place you know normal normal stuff but it was not normal at all keep in mind that caitlin the girl who was with me is still one of my best friends to this day about a minute goes by and all of a sudden i see him drive back past us and we're about like at the end of the, all the apartment complexes which is a huge apartment complex place whatever you want to call it now at the same time we are a bunch of little girls so we're pretty dramatic and we caught on to it pretty fast believe it or not and when we saw him drive by again we were like Oh, this is so weird. Is he trying to kidnap us? Just like trying to be dramatic. He drives past us once again. And all of a sudden I'm like, okay guys. Cause I was like kind of like the mother of the group. I was like, okay guys, let's all like go somewhere else. You know, we're just a bunch of little girls really late at night. Who was getting pizza this late at night anyway? Um, so we're like, okay, this is weird. So we end up moving somewhere else, which is basically the same area we thought we were slick. 
He drives by again, but this time he slows down and he stops in front of our apartment complex. All of a sudden, the girls, which it wasn't just Caitlyn. I think there was like one other girl. I, I don't remember. It could have been just Caitlyn or one other girl. Start sprinting. They are sprinting down the street. And I'm standing there like, being like, these girls are gone. They're gone. And I see him start getting out of his car. So that's when I go, oh, shit. like, I gotta go. So I start sprinting on the street. But keep in mind, my little stubby legs at the time, I did not get far before all of a sudden I feel this tap on my shoulder. Get ready with me to go to work while I explain part two of how I almost got kidnapped by a Pizza Hut worker. If you haven't already, make sure you go watch part one first. So I'm running down the street, right? And I feel this like tap or kind of like a pull on my shoulder. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm done. Like this is the Pizza Hut worker, right? Like I thought I was gonna get kidnapped. I turn around and it's Simon, my upstairs neighbor, who's around 80 years old and I'm eight. And he's grabbing me and he's like shoving me and he's like, come on, girl, what are you doing? Like, why are you out so late? I'm like, no, no, I gotta go. Like, there is a Pizza Hut worker trying to kidnap me right now, Simon. Simon is dragging me. I mean, like, dragging me, trying so hard to get my little energetic eight-year-old self to get up to his apartment. Because I was out at 2 a.m., this little girl right on the street screaming. But the problem is, I don't know where my friends are. I don't know where the Pizza Hut worker is. I don't see him anywhere. Anywhere. I'm finally able to run away from Simon and go try to find my friends because, you know, they are really important to me. So I'm running around finding them. All of a sudden, Pizza Hut worker guy's back. He's back. Keep in mind, it's 2 a.m. It's dark outside. We live in, like, this, like, random apartment complex where, like, no one really goes. And we're at the end of it. So this is, like, woods right next to us and not very many light. So I was like, oh, there he is again. Like, I gotta run. So I run into someone else's apartment. Not the, like, room, but, like, where the stairs are to go under the apartment complex. I find the girls underneath the staircase, shaking, sobbing, like violently not even able to breathe. I'm like, whoa guys, what, what in the world's happening? And, but like, I don't even have time to talk to them because they get up and they're running because all of a sudden I turn around, the Pizza Hut worker is getting out of his car. I see the Pizza Hut man and I am out. Like my friends, I turn around, they're gone. They're much faster than me. And behind the apartment was like this green grassy hilly area. And it's like kind of like hidden by a fence. So we just like sprint down that all the way till we get to my apartment where we go in Simon's house. Simon is this, Simon's a whole other story that I have many, many stories of, especially ghost stories that I could always share. We're hiding in Simon's room, freaking out because the door is obviously closed and we don't know where the Pizza Hut worker is. We don't know how to word what just happened. Caitlin can't even talk. And I'm trying to explain how the Pizza Hut worker almost got us at 2 a.m. All of a sudden, the door has this loud pounding on it. In my mind, I'm like, oh, we're done. You guys need to understand that we are very young little girls, so we start screaming like bloody murder. And Simon opens the door, and we're like hiding under the couch, we're shaking, we're screaming, no, Simon, stop. Simon's like, don't worry, girls, I'm just gonna open the door, I'm just gonna peek, like, what are you guys freaking out about? Because we're trying to tell him what's happening, but we're hyperventilating from running so much. And we're little girls, we don't know how to explain that a Pizza Hut worker almost got us without seeming like we're dramatic. He opens the door, the screaming stops, it's my dad. And he grabs me out of that apartment real fast, and I never tell him about the incident. 